now. Sir Keir Starmer has said councils won't get more cash under a Labour government because there's no magic money tree. Well, Labour's also claiming that people who live in council areas under its control are better off. We'll look at those details in a bit more detail. Uh, they say you'll pay an average of £276 less council tax than under a Conservative run authority. Well, we're joined now by Times Radio presenter James Hansen and former Labour Party official Richard Power. Saeed, very good to see both of you. Thank you for good coming morning. back, James. Richard, really good to see you as well. Now, Keir Starmer has kicked this off. These are the local elections. Anyone would think, watching him and his speech, this was the beginning of the general election. Oh, yes, you would think that, <laughs> you wouldn't would. you? Oh, isn't that funny? Um, I mean, this is sadly what happens with local election campaigns, right? They just become proxies for what's happening nationally. And in this case, you know, we're expecting Starmer to be prime minister in less than a year. So in a way, that's quite reasonable. The country needs to see as much as they can of him and be able to challenge him, hold him to account. That's the right thing. So, James, what have we actually learnt then about the Labour Party's plans for local elections? Mm. They're saying you can trust us with the economy, you'll be better off, but then saying there's no magic money tree and they're going to need money if they want to, as all of the public wants, improve public services. Well, this is it. And they're talking about levelling up. Remember that, Boris Johnson's big phrase? But they haven't said how they're going to pay for it. What does levelling up actually mean in practice? What policies need to be implemented and how do you fund it? And Keir Starmer, using, as you say, David, that phrase is no magic money tree. Where have we heard that before? Mm. So basically saying we want to level up by giving more power to local councils. But by the way, there's no cash to do it with. And just on this thing about Labour, people in Labour council areas pay less council tax, I'm a bit sceptical about that. Isn't that because often in a Tory area you might have more expensive properties, so the tax bans are a bit higher and so on average the, the council tax bills are a bit higher. That's yes. probably all that's going on there. And it's it? about the banding. So I would throw back at you <laughs> Tower Hamlets, for example, which is where Canary Wharf is. The council tax is off the scale. And that's Luther Rahman who runs that, a Labour-controlled council. Yeah, so I'm a little bit sceptical about those figures. Luther Rahman isn't Labour oh, sorry. anymore. He, um, oh, he, def he, he, he defected. He defected yeah. before the last election, so... But the um, point I'm trying no. to make is the same one, mm. which is actually when you have really expensive properties, the council has, has, uh, council tax tends to be more expensive. Yeah. Richard, I can see you nodding along with that. <laughs> James's uh, apt analysis of exactly what's going on. Why does the Labour Party need these sort of like cheap PR strategies then to try and persuade people around? Because you might look at that and think, OK, so the Labour Party are trying to tell me that under the Conservatives you're paying more and getting less. And Labour sort of saying, well, you'll pay less and get even less with us. You know what? I'm not particularly keen on the magic money tree phrase. I think it kind mm. of gives a, a false impression of how government finances work. But I actually think the credit to Labour, credit to Keir Starmer, he's being pretty frank about what the situation is and what kind of expectations... Managing expectations, yeah. it is manage It's managing expectations, which is the sort of pragmatic version of it, but the other version of it is kind of not giving people false hope about what government can achieve, particularly in a very difficult geostrategic position, which is what Britain now is in. What I would say is, you know, to this question of how are they going to pay for it, very reasonable question, the answer that you had from Rachel Reeves last week in this big speech that she gave was, we're going to find basically cheap, inexpensive ways of doing it. So, for instance, you've got um, uh, housing planning uh, rules. They're going to say to councils, if you don't come up with a plan for getting private developers to build more housing because of all your NIMBYs, then we're going to force it on you. That is free. That's free for the government and it's free even for local authorities f to do. Similarly, um, going to the social care sector and saying, you are going to have to put up wages for, for care workers. We're going to give them the power to organise together, go to bosses and say, you've got to put wages up. It's free, but it helps people. These are very clever ways for the government. Wages to... isn't free. Sorry, it's, it's, it's free for the government in terms of government spending. Mm. Right, so um, the government uh, is able to really improve people's lives, to level up um, uh, in a way which doesn't actually cost the taxpayer. James, well, you might be thinking that is magic. Mm. Well, yeah, but I mean, if it were that <laughs> easy, the government would be doing it already. No, they know? wouldn't, because they don't want to uh, make well, no, so bosses' lives difficult. But, in but the James's care point sector. is valid, which is the Conservatives said they want to build 300,000 new homes every year. But they don't year. do it. No, they don't do it because you're met by opposition locally. Now, if Labour goes in and railroads those local communities, they won't be very popular for very long. So the short answer to that is those are places that probably aren't going to vote Labour at any point and therefore they're not so concerned about it.
Before we get into the weeds of exactly the, 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 the challenges currently facing the deputy leader of the Labour Party, James, mm. can you? It is complicated. Yes. This is all about where she lived, <laughs> when, and when she sold her house. Tell us. Are you of, giving me the, the challenge of trying uh, to explain? I am. <laughs> <laughs> but just service level, there are yes. allegations about where she sold her home and where exactly. she lived and what tax she paid on it at the time. So this is about the council house in Stockport that Angela Rayner, deputy leader of the Labour Party, used to live in when she sold it. She didn't pay any capital gains tax on it because she claimed it was her primary residence. But there are allegations that actually she was living with her then husband instead. And so if it wasn't her primary residence, she would have been liable to pay capital gains tax on it, which she hasn't. Now, she says she's had independent tax advice that has cleared her in all this and says she's done nothing wrong. But a lot of people are now saying, well, OK, fine. If you've done nothing wrong, publish your independent tax advice and then we can all see and then this row can go away. But it's rumbling on and there are big questions now over, well, why hasn't she been more transparent if she says she's in the clear? Can I just say excellent explanation? Yes, <laughs> it was extremely good. So given that, Richard, it, all of this goes away, all of the speculation. If she just says, I've had that advice, as James said, here it is. Why hasn't she done that? You know what? She has. She's gone to the police and she's given them all that information and they've said, totally fine, don't worry but about it. But they've reinvested, it. reopening the case. So this is the very clever thing. Going to kind of like pull the curtains back here, do the like comms person explanation of what's going on. When you don't have new evidence in a case like this, you just get some local MP to mouth off to the police about the fact that they think that the investigation should be reopened. The police know that they don't have any new evidence, know that nothing's going to come of it, but they open the investigation well, you, you again know, in order you to do, please that person. You don't know person. what information the police have. Yes. The police have said no, they I need to no, review it. No, we do, because the police have said we don't have any new evidence. We are reopening this because we have been... Um, a, a Tory vice chairman has said you should reopen it, so we're going to look at it again. But, They're not even investigating. But it's the They're optics. They're just deciding mm. whether to... Richard, yeah, it's sure. the optics of oh, this, the optics isn't it? In, in terms of the electorate, they see pigs with their noses in the trough, and here we go again, and we're met all the time by Labour saying, Tory sleaze, Tory sleaze. This is looking like Labour sleaze, and it is front page. It would be in the mail, but it is front page. Um, Angela no, Rayner, is she going like from an electoral that. asset into a liability? In 2007 when she was working as a care worker for the council, she bought her council home. And I think most people will not begrudge her that. No. And most people will look at that and say, God, but that's irrelevant. More. Did no, she wait, wait, break the say, law? No, most people will say, that is exactly the kind of person that we need in politics. Now, Angela Rayner herself, I agree, is a Marmite character. I love her. Some people don't. I think the fact that people really dislike a working class woman who's really, really improved her life and fights incredibly hard for other working class people, being deputy leader of the Labour Party is an amazing thing. And I think that's disingenuous, actually. I don't think that's what people think, James. But, I mean, if you pose as a straight talker, which in many ways Angela Rayner is, then you've got to back it up. And when people ask questions she has, about... She's gone she has previously called for conservative candidates to publish, for example, their tax returns. Yeah. She has asked that of other politicians. She's, she is being totally transparent about the financial elements. What she is keeping private, and I think this is very reasonable, is anything that relates to family members. And it is really grim, I think, when people start no, publishing she her registered, family members. No, she registered the births of her children like at a different address. This is now in the public interest, And I don't it? think anyone is asking for her children's birth certificate. She, she made this claim oh, on the my, radio Michael yesterday. Michael Ashcroft is. She, she said, oh, you know, I don't want to have to unearth 15 years' worth of personal documents. No one's asking for that. People are just saying, wouldn't it make the row go away if she published the independent tax advice that she said she had recently that cleared her of any wrongdoing? If the financial crime experts at the cops and HMRC say that it's fine, good enough for me. Richard, tell me hand <laughs> on heart, if we were talking about the current Deputy Prime Minister, mm. would you lay out exactly the same case? Oh, that is a good question. I'm going <laughs> to challenge myself here. I think that if the cops... And HMRC said, it's totally fine, I'd be OK with that. OK. James, the problem with these mm. stories is they can stick. You know, from your yes. experience mm. charting these political stories, how much of a problem actually is this? Is this a small blip for Labour or is this something that could escalate? Well, it's a sign of what the Conservatives want to do. I mean, they're loving this, the Conservative Central Office, because they know that if they do somehow miraculously win the next election, it won't be because of some groundswell of enthusiasm from the current <laughs> government. It'll be because of negative stories about Labour and chipping away at the public's faith in Keir Starmer and the team around him, people like Angela Rayner. Mm. Thank Can you I... both very much for time. <laughs>